So you know how in most companies, they open a new store, they kind of treat it like a massive deal. Well, Xiaomi, in a single day, opened not one, not two, but a thousand stores. Crazy company. And seeing how fast they're expanding, I think it's time we address them. So these are my top 40 things about Xiaomi. From pretty cool to just ridiculous. Okay, so the name, Xiaomi. You might think that given what they sell, it's got something to do with gadgets, but it actually translates to little rice, which refers to a Buddhist concept all about starting with very little and working your way up to the top. And even their logo is a little bit more than it seems. There's the obvious fact that it says me, which is like a shorthand of Xiaomi, but it also legitimately stands for both mobile internet and I'm not even making this stuff up, mission impossible. It actually says that on their website. And there's another layer. Flip this logo over and me becomes the Chinese symbol for heart. Okay, if I had to define Xiaomi by just one characteristic, it would be community focused. You know how OnePlus has this whole attitude of treating their customers like fans? Well, I think there's a pretty good chance that they got this from Xiaomi. Like, we're talking about a company who hosts quiz tournaments with their most loyal followers, who hosts meetups everywhere from Nepal to the United States, who invited fans to the office for Christmas in Spain, a company who went out and cleaned up after flooding in Thailand alongside their Mi family. I do actually remember the day that Xiaomi came to the UK for the first time, and they basically had their entire community just run around the cities wearing orange t-shirts. Could you ever imagine, like, Samsung doing that? Probably not. I will say though that a lot of this fan stuff, it does occasionally tread the line into cringe territory. Like I watched this one video where they were reading out a poem that someone wrote to Xiaomi. You turn us on with your very best smartphone. And I, I just can't. But yeah, for the most part, they know how to connect with people. And there's probably no better example of this than the Mi Fan Festival. It's an online event where Xiaomi basically launches a few new products, they slap discounts across their existing products, and they even create games for people to win things. And you're gonna wanna take a seat for this one. Because in the last festival they did, and just the Chinese branch of it, they managed to get 98 million people participating. And I just can't, for the life of me, wrap my head around the scale of that figure. 98 million people in one country in one day. That said, this is kind of Xiaomi's main hurdle right now. They're very China focused. They have separate China only launch events, like a good month before everyone else gets their phones. Many of their products, they never even release in other countries. And while it almost looks like Xiaomi has their own religion in China, they've really struggled to cultivate that kind of fandom outside. I mean, just take Lei Jun, who's the chairman of Xiaomi. He has around 60,000 followers on Twitter, the global platform. How many do you think he has on the China-only Weibo? 100,000? 23 million. But this is changing. Xiaomi has taken a lot of steps recently to, to try and make itself a worldwide entity. Like how in 2013, they brought in Hugo Barra, a high profile Google employee to become vice president of Xiaomi, which it doesn't take a genius is also in part to just give them this Western friendly image. Or how in 2017, Xiaomi signed a collaboration deal with Nokia, such that both companies can use each other's patents. And there's actually more to this whole Nokia overlap. You see, Xiaomi's cameras have been famously tailored to Asian consumers. The heavy beautification, the skin smoothing, the type of filters, and even the ability to change the shape of your face. These are things that the Asian market really appreciates, but at least from my experience, the Western market doesn't so much. So to try and cater for international tastes, Xiaomi's actually set up a camera lab in Finland, in the exact same city where Nokia's camera lab was presumably to hire employees who know what they're doing. Also, internationally speaking, Xiaomi's always had a, a bit of a pronunciation problem. Because, I mean, in most Western languages, we don't see words like this. Unless, of course, you're a viewer of this channel, in which case a sub to the channel would be me Raculous. Nailed it. But anyways, the point I was making is that Hugo Barra, he actually helped with this pronunciation problem. So the way he described it to people was, if you want to say Xiaomi, then try and say show me, but say the show as if it was part of the word shower. So, shao me. So with this more global mindset, and with this whole hiring of more international employees, 
Within just 10 years, Xiaomi's gone from a band of eight guys in a room in China to now selling devices in 90 different countries. It's honestly, it's stupid levels of growth. I couldn't believe this, but they've actually knocked off Apple to become the second biggest in Spain. And if you go to Ukraine, they're number one. Xiaomi is just generally killing it in Eastern Europe because I think it's just a market where people are less attached to Samsung and Apple and much more just in pursuit of value. And even though Xiaomi hasn't broken into the US yet, there is promise. Like Steve Wozniak himself, co-founder of Apple, is actually a bit of a Xiaomi fan. And he himself publicly said that Xiaomi products are good enough to break the American market. And that brings me to India. When Xiaomi first looked at India as a potential market, it really did seem like a mission impossible. Like for starters, nobody there had heard of them. And there's also the fact that Xiaomi's entire business model at the time was based on online sales. But this market wasn't. They did it though. And within just six years, they were not just trading blows with Samsung for the absolute top position, but they've also managed to dethrone just about every single local brand. They provided better value, rock bottom prices, flash sales. Xiaomi even started manufacturing in India to save on shipping costs. And I think the most interesting thing is Xiaomi's attitude to profit. You know how there's this common idea towards things you buy in a store that, oh, it's great, but they probably made this for a fraction of the price. Well. That doesn't really work in the Android phone market, especially for Xiaomi, who apparently only takes away about $2 of profit per device sold. That's, in the UK at least, about enough to buy half a sandwich. Obviously, this still becomes a fairly substantial figure given the number of devices they sell, but the way that Xiaomi really gets its profits up is through software. Like how on more budget devices, they bundle in adverts, which you can turn off, but just given the fact that they're on by default and the fact that they're shown literally every time you install an app or use a first party tool, you can see how they make a lot of money for them. And themes, Xiaomi actually invests a large sum in getting talented developers on board to make them. And they even pay these developers before they've even done anything, just so that they don't have to worry about making money and they can focus on being creative. Okay, so Xiaomi is spreading like wildfire. And you would think that for growth this fast, they must have started off with a bang. They must have hit the ground running. They must have launched with a phone so good that it blew people away. Not really. When Xiaomi started in 2010, they were an internet and software company. They saw how Android phones at the time lacked customization and looked kind of boring. So their first product was actually not a phone, but just a piece of software. It was MIUI. And it actually took Xiaomi a whole extra year after starting for them to come out with a phone that ran it. Do you wanna know the most surprising thing though about Xiaomi's success? It's the fact that it's not just been an incredibly short time frame, but they've also managed to do this with just 20,000 full-time employees. That might sound like a lot, but Huawei has almost 200,000 and Xiaomi's main competitor right now, Samsung, almost 300,000. And so the only way that this growth has been possible is because Xiaomi doesn't waste time. They specifically say on their website how they're against never-ending meetings and lengthy processes. And there's also the ongoing debate as to whether they save time by also borrowing ideas. We'll put it that way. How their stores, for example, they look like carbon copies of Apple stores. The same color scheme, the same product spacing to make each thing seem important, even how they decorate their walls. But the thing that I think has caused even more of a stir is the products themselves. Some of Xiaomi's past products look so much like their Apple counterparts that can it really be a coincidence? Like just compare the Xiaomi Mi 8 to the iPhone 10, the Mi Pad to the iPad, or Xiaomi's AirDots versus Apple's AirPods. But credit where due, as well as the more dubious potentially clone products, Xiaomi does also have a much wider selection than most of its competitors. They have phones, yes, but also everything from a nose hair trimmer to an electric unicycle, to a mattress, to a robot vacuum cleaner, which is funnily enough, the one that I use. And Xiaomi is not afraid to test the limits. They made the Mi Mix Alpha with its wraparound display. They made a triple folding phone, even though it never released. They made a transparent TV, which still makes no sense to me given that the only thing it's going to show is your cables going into your walls, 
but I like the experimentation. Okay, when you think of big tech companies, there's a pretty good chance that you think of Apple's colossal glass headquarters, or Huawei's sprawling European city-like workplace. But it's actually really hard to find almost anything about Xiaomi's HQ. They call it the Technology Park, and from the bits that I have managed to piece together, it does look fascinating. There are slides to go downstairs, there are people carting around on Xiaomi-built products. It's just that, as far as the English-speaking world is concerned, it barely exists. And this is also where their labs are. They have more than 90 rooms here, each built to make sure that their smartphones are all calibrated right, that the cameras look good, that the audio sounds correct. They've even got a room here that can simulate every weather condition to make sure that the screens remain pleasant to look at in them. But probably the coolest part of this HQ is that Xiaomi has a fake home here. And the idea is that this is the kind of home that they're targeting their Mi devices at. And so by having one here in their complex, it means they can not just use it to test things they're building to make sure they work in that home environment, but this also serves as a way to inspire the next gadgets that they decide these homes can benefit from. Now, just before my top three, you might be wondering, Xiaomi's going global, Steve Wozniak himself recommended them, they're kind of like Apple, but cheaper. Why don't they have a presence in the United States? Well, there's three prevailing theories. One, that they're waiting for US-China relationships to improve before giving it a proper shot. Two, that they'd kind of have to shift their entire business model of selling the phones on their own to actually working with carriers to try and sell contracts, because that's how everyone in the US buys phones. But also three, that in the US, patents are enforced strictly. And so it is also possible that Xiaomi's just hesitant because they don't want to get sued. Okay, number three, Xiaomi has an official dog. She was actually a stray who just so happened to end up outside their engineering headquarters as it was being built, so they took her in. She was apparently in pretty bad shape, so they got her treated, they cleaned her up, and then actually gave her a company badge until one of the employees decided to just look after her full time. Two, Xiaomi are terrible at naming their products. Tech Altar did a really good video about this, but fundamentally, they've created a whole lot of brands. You've got Mi, you've got Redmi, you've got Mi Note, etc. And it really feels like when they launch a new phone, they just pick a random combination of one of these, one number, which half the time doesn't even match with the other phones of the series, and then one of about 30 different ways of saying that it's either a light or a pro version. And it's just a mess. Like, the Redmi Note 9S is a higher-end version of the Redmi Note 9. So, Oh, right, S must mean higher end. No, because the Redmi 3S is a light version of a Redmi 3. They're almost as bad at naming things as Elon Musk. Then again, am I really one to talk about naming? I spelt my own username wrong, right? Or did I? I feel like this is going to be a 10 million subscriber special. Why I actually called the channel Mr. Who's the Boss. And number one, to try and improve their appearance globally, Xiaomi shortened their website URL from xiaomi.com to me.com. But that's not the surprising bit. See, the way it works with website domain names is that just like for custom number plates, the more memorable and the shorter they are, the more valuable they are. And so for this incredibly simple domain name swap, Xiaomi paid 3.6 million US dollars. Okay, if you enjoyed this video, do consider subscribing. We're gonna try and hit that 10 million mark by the end of this year. And with that being said, my name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.